just as a way of introduction, my name is Michael Len. I'm the director of Reuse, and I'm joined here by uh, my colleague Kelly Piron, who will be uh, assisting with the smooth running of this conversation from a, from a technical standpoint. And uh, our president, Matthias Neitsch, is also here, who is the managing director of the Social and Circular Enterprise Network, Repanet. And I'll hand over to Matthias in a moment following a couple of minutes of introduction uh, just to set the scene a little bit as to why we reached out to you uh, in the uh, in the first place um we're doing this conversation series as part of our 20th anniversary celebrations in a bit to cast a little bit more light as to what social value means in the context of the circular economy and how it can be promoted better through policy and practice and we know social value, as I can imagine, to your team as well. It can it can mean something different uh, to to everyone. Um, but for us, as a network of social enterprises, it's really about supporting people in their everyday lives. Um, it's about using the world of reuse and repair to provide jobs and skills to people who are most at risk of social exclusion. And it's also about making circular products and services as available as possible to everyone of all income levels and um, our wider network of 1000 social enterprises across 26 countries uh, collect around 1 million tons of goods and materials annually and this can range from textiles to furniture to electronics to building materials and and through these activities of reuse repair and, and recycling they're managing to employ over 100,000 individuals the majority of whom are distanced from the labor market. And in our previous conversations on social value in the circular economy, we were joined by um, Bloomberg uh, correspondent and author of the book Secondhand, and this is the book Secondhand. It's a great read, which I, which I <laughs> definitely um, encourage uh, some holiday reading on. Um, uh, Adam Minter, he joined us as well as uh, Lakshmi Narayan, who is uh, the co-founder of a waste picker cooperative and also waste picker trade union in Pune, India. Um, they both had very different stories to tell us about social value in the circular economy, but this idea of combining circular activities with strong social objectives ran really strongly throughout. And, and as an organization, as, as Reuse, we've been doing our best to support the Commission um, and the EU institutions to create a stronger legal framework to support more reuse and repair and to somehow bring it out of the shadow of recycling and, and we're really grateful for your support specifically commissioner because i know you're doing a lot in this regard with regards to your work on the, on the circular economy and um one of our key objectives as an organization in recent times whilst we focus a lot on environmental policy and a lot of dossiers which you are working on is to really create more synergies between the eu's circular agenda and the eu's social agenda and um, just before Christmas, as I was speaking to Federico just now before you joined, um, your commissioner colleagues Nicholas Schmidt and Thierry Breton published the Social Economy Action Plan, which was a really, really, really big moment uh, for us as it acts as a kind of new bridge in between the social and the circular world. And um, at national level, we can see some really interesting policy instruments which are combining um, both environmental and employment focused objectives. For example, reuse targets in Spain, in Belgium, soon in France, as well as new funds to support product life extension and also inclusive employment at the same time. So for example, in France, under their new circular economy action plan, they have created a new social and solidarity reuse fund, which aims to create 70,000 jobs for disadvantaged individuals by 2030 through the activities of reuse. So there's really interesting combinations at national level of both social and circular policy instruments which are moving forward. So in today's conversation, we really wanted to look at Europe's policy approach and in particular your personal views on what social value means to you. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just we, we want to get a conversation started um, about this uh, topic um, and how you think it could be um, integrated or is already being integrated within your thinking about policies on the circular economy. And I'm going to stop there because I'm babbling on for too long. I just really want to thank you, Commissioner, once again for your time. It means an awful lot to us. And I think I'll stop there and I'll hand over to our President, Matthias, who will actually have the conversation with you. It's just a big thank you for being with us here today. Matthias, the floor is yours. 
Okay, a big thank you from my side as well for uh, for giving us uh, your precious time. And uh, yeah, uh, as you uh, heard now, uh, um, our, our main topic that we would like to talk uh, with you is a uh, circular economy in combination with uh, social policies and social value. Uh, but this is uh, obviously not the only topic that you are, uh, you're um, uh, employed with. So uh, if, if we oversee the great variety of policy files ranging from oceans, fisheries, biodiversity, uh, and leading on the development of the EU, EU circular economy action plan. What is keeping you most busy at this moment in time, apart from Omicron, maybe? Yes, uh, thank you very much. And of course, uh, thank you for having me. And it's 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 my pleasure to spend this, this, uh, this time with you. So I'll probably begin. Uh, I'll begin this year, uh, I think, first of all, with a lot of enthusiasm uh, about our green uh, agenda and of course the way we see ahead uh, the first two years of of of, of mandate of, of this commission and and myself as a commissioner responsible for environment oceans and and, and fisheries uh, did not come the way we expected and did not come in the easiest of times however i think despite the challenges first of all of course the pandemic uh, brexit uh, geopolitical tensions, we continued to put the green transition high on the political agenda and we kept the course of the European Green Deal. And I think this is extremely important. I've been getting this question uh, over and over again. Is it uh, that the Green Deal will be, will, be, will be put somewhere aside and other priorities taken? And actually, uh, Green Deal proves to be as relevant and maybe even more relevant than it was at the beginning of, of our mandate, because I, I, I think this is the only way, uh, uh, you know, for us to, 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 to uh, reach our sustainability goals, but also ensure that we come out of this crisis even, even stronger. Uh, I think what's very clear is that, that our planet is sending us uh, stronger and stronger signals that we need to change profoundly. Uh, and first of all, of course, our wasteful, uh, wasteful ways. And I believe that this change can be a, a positive experience for all. Uh, a stable climate, a clean environment, and a circular economy definitely will bring uh, benefits to, to all people. And there is no reason why the economy will not be able to, to flourish while preserving the balance on our planet. Uh, but this, uh, of course, will not be easy. This, won't come uh, without an effort. At the EU level, we presented the plans for the green transition at the beginning of the mandate. And we are following up with, uh, with the concrete deliverables under the circular economy action plan. We have already comprehensive proposals for sustainable batteries, uh, new rules for waste shipments, and phasing out uh, harmful chemicals. Now we are working also on the implementation of the rules to increase recycling and reduce waste, including plastic waste, and we are gearing up for much more. One of the flagships uh, of uh, our, I can't call it new now, but the Circular Economy Action Plan is, um, is of course the Sustainable Products Initiative. It aims to take sustainable products out of niche into making it a norm. And, and for this, we are planning to broaden the scope of the eco-design directive, uh, going beyond uh, energy-related products, improving uh, product durability, reusability, upgradability, and repairability. And that's the way we, we, we see forward. This is very important uh, for citizens and can bring uh, environmental benefits and, and cost-saving opportunities products should also have lower carbon and environmental footprints and of course uh, contain much more uh, recycled content. This proposal will be the framework for the future work to roll out the rules to improve the environmental performance of different categories of products. It will be a, a, a real bridge to the future as it builds on both on the green and, and on the digital transition. And there is a lot of promise in the digital product passport in sharing more information on products. So we plan to supplement this with 
further measures towards effectively creating what we call a right to repair. We also want to develop rules how to substantiate green claims so that consumers are empowered to choose products with lower environmental impacts. Sectoral initiatives are, are also, of course, important. Uh, and, and we are working on a strategy for sustainable and circular textiles. Uh, we need to address the environmental impacts of the sector while thinking about its recovery from the crisis. And this means uh, increasing competitiveness, applying circular economy principles to production, to products, to consumption, uh, of course, waste management, and then secondary raw materials. And we will also uh, come back to, to packaging. Um, a review of, of packaging and packaging waste directive is planned in order to reinforce the mandatory essential requirements for packaging and, and promote uh, waste reduction. Uh, focus will be on, on, on reducing packaging waste generation and overpackaging, on uh, driving design for reuse and recyclability of packaging, and on stimulating the uptake of, of recycled content in packaging. We're also continuing to work on the plastic sector, transition towards a circular economy. And uh, we have to address the presence of microplastics in the environment and develop a policy framework for bio-based, uh, compostable, and biodegradable plastics. And it's all in 2022. Sorry, always I forget to unmute myself. Okay, thank you very much. This is really a, a huge, a huge variety of, of topics um, that uh, and, and all are probably same important for, for your work. Um, uh, with regards to your circular economy portfolio, to what extent has generating social value been an inherent part of your conversations uh, so far when developing policies? I mean, for, for you, uh, what does the concept of social value look like? And are there specific circular activities where you see uh, the opportunity for the circular economy to, to deliver significant social value? Like you mentioned the textile uh, uh, strategy uh, where it is most uh, obvious and most visible that uh, there are a lot of uh, social economy and charity uh, 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 actors in, in that field of, of reuse of, of textiles uh, and also um, uh, uh, in, in other fields of reuse, the, the social economy players are, uh, I would say, one of the most visible, at least in Austria, we are the more or less the, the leading the leading uh, uh, player in the in the second hand market are the, the social enterprises. So uh, that is where, where these two come come together. And, and you talked a lot about products now. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, long, long uh, living products are uh, for me the best basis for creating social value as well, because people want to get rid of products. Uh, if these are long living products, uh, then they can be sold again by uh, by uh, uh, social enterprises where they are first donated and then can be resold. So uh, is that an aspect that has been uh, so far uh, part of your, your policy uh, discussions uh, as well? So, you know, I believe, I believe that uh, social value is the ultimate measure for, for the success of, of any policy. And this is what, what makes uh, policy measures legitimate, more easily implementable and, and effective. And I think a, a, a positive, uh, it gives a, a, a positive experience uh, for our citizens. So therefore, you know, creating social value is, is always a cornerstone of, of our initiative. It, it is a part of and, 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 and parcel of, of our considerations from the very start when we develop uh, impact assessments and EU environmental rules have proven their social value. Let's start with eco-design. Uh, eco-design uh, uh, directive saves energy costs to consumers. Rules on waste management and, and extended uh, producer responsibility make sure that it is the polluter that pays. Uh, phasing out harmful chemicals is a task that industry has to deal with uh, upfront rather than people paying with their health after the harm has been done. 
cleaner water and air benefits. Uh, it, it benefits, you know, people that are particularly vulnerable uh, to pollution due to where they live uh, or work. And in addition, growth in, in, in the environmental uh, goods and services sector creates uh, local opportunities, creates local jobs, in particular when more labor intensive activities um, are promoted. With targets and other environmental policy measures on reuse, repair and recycling, we want to make sure that these activities flourish. For instance, repair and reuse activities have to become more accessible and attractive both for operators and consumers. And there is also a role for, for, for employment policy and, um, and education in, in, in promoting circular economy. The new circular economy action plan actually highlights the potential of the social uh, economy, which is uh, a pioneer in, in job creation linked to circular models. And the newly published social economy action plan is very much welcome as um, overall support to social enterprises, and, and that will benefit the circular economy. Uh, social enterprises are in the, the fabrics of our society, representing around 6% uh, of, of the workforce, but with much broader outreach and significance. The core task of these organizations is to provide goods and services to community with profits uh, coming second. And uh, what they do, they build uh, on local roots using solidarity and, and, and participation as core principles driving their activities. Uh, the social economy contributes to green transition by developing sustainable practices, goods, services, uh, and increase, uh, increasing, of course, the ac uh, acceptability of behavioral changes. Many of the solutions are inclusive, addressing those uh, most impacted by the green transition. They foster short value chains, facilitating local production and consumption. The social economy uh, action plan highlights the contribution of the social economy um, and uh, is particularly remarkable for development of, so, uh, of, of, of circular economy where it's uh, pioneering activities and business models that retain the value of products and materials for as long as possible. Uh, reduce waste, provide cost-saving opportunities uh, to, 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 to citizens and create local jobs, especially in repair, uh, reuse, and, 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 and sharing and recycling. And I think <clears throat> this, uh, this, this uh, potential uh, can be even further promoted by raising awareness of the scope for greater uptake of these practices. And there is a role for partnership with uh, mainstream uh, businesses along value chains and uh, public-private partnership. And these can, can involve um, uh, public authorities, research institutes, of course, industry uh, and, and social uh, economy entities. Um, your, your colleagues in the DG Employment published their Social Economy Action Plan in December, uh, which is very, as you already mentioned, uh, something of really key importance to our reuse network and, and our membership. Uh, and given that social enterprises are seen as pioneers in job creation that you already mentioned, uh, uh, how do you see the two action plans reinforcing each other? I, I mean, in more concrete, are there uh, do you think it should there should be uh, something like common funding calls, funding lines uh, of of both uh, both sectors uh, together to to uh, try to to connect this a little bit more and creating more favorable policy and funding environment for social enterprises and community based actors working in reuse and waste prevention? So, do you think there are other EU initiatives that can play a key role in? in supporting a just socially fair transition into a climate neutral circular economy on the ground? Yeah. So, you know, so the commission uh, will issue guidance on, 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 on how, to, how to support uh, uptake and, 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 and partnerships for the circular economy between social enterprises and other, other actors that I mentioned before, uh, including mainstream build, uh, businesses. And we will also raise awareness of the social economy in the context of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform, Enterprise Europe Network, and, and other networks. Another interesting aspect is the, the impact of, of taxation on circular players, which often are social economy actors. 
such as repair and reuse operators. However, as you know, the competence on, on, on taxation issues is, 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 is mostly with, uh, with member states, but we will continue to exchange with national authorities on the matter. Many other commission initiatives can play key role in supporting a just uh, 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 socially fair transition into, into climate uh, neutral circular economy, the just transition mechanism, the European skills uh, agenda, the new pact for, for skills. And, and this is certainly not only uh, uh, the case, but, but it's, it's actually a, 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 a direction that, 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 that uh, we, we have taken. Uh, advisory services for for uh, for circular uh, economies such as the new Invest EU advisory hub, uh, deploying technical assistance on on natural capital and circular economy projects supported by a life program. They can support social economy enterprises having a clear uh, circular economy business object. And in addition to to awareness raising, cooperation and capacity building. Uh, cohesion policy funds, they will help regions to implement circular economy strategies and, and reinforce uh, their industrial fabric and value chains. Further investment in education and training systems, uh, lifelong learning and, and social e innovation will be promoted under the European Social Funds Plus. Moreover, the Commission has been assessing uh, the national recovery and resilience plans. Uh, and and uh, as, 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 as part of the recovery and resilience facility. Uh, so the Commission has already published proposals for, for a council implementing decision of, of approvals of, of member states' plans. And the sing, uh, circular economy actually has featured high in the Commission suggested priorities. Uh, and, and most member states have indeed specific investment plans on the topic. So we keep working uh, with member states to encourage them to channel resources into, into forward-looking uh, projects aiming at support uh, an inclusive circular economy, for example, by supporting um, reskilling of workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, uh, I, I realized that this, uh, especially these RFF funds uh, were very, very progressive and very, uh, I mean, uh, cross-sectoral in, in, in this topic, and uh, at least as, as I can say for Austria, uh, uh, that was, I think, a, a relatively successful uh, um, funding line that, that is helping the uh, um, circular economy a lot. And um, uh, is there, are there any more plans in the future like this, uh, this very specific, uh, specific recovery funds? Uh, I mean, apart from the, from the standard uh, funding lines that are already in place to support an inclusive, I mean, socially inclusive circular economy transition. You know, just transition is also is the, the, more or less the third topic. Uh, it's, it's social value, circular economy reuse uh, uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, you mentioned the green transition uh, in the beginning. I think this is the, the, the 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 main thing we're talking about we have to to uh, more or less finance uh, the the uh, our ability to go through this transition are, are there any any more plans uh, on the eu level to to create such such tr transitional funds so i i think at the moment there is plenty and uh, most mm -hmm. importantly that they would be uh, would be well implemented and 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 uh, and we would see the results on the ground uh, because I think you know if you look at uh, what's on the table uh, it's the record amount of of of, of public funds and uh, most of them of course they have to be channeled into into a green transition but we know that it's not going to be easy so yeah. member states they they proposed uh, their very ambitious uh, uh, recovery and resilience plans, uh, which Commission uh, and including my services evaluated very carefully. Uh, we worked very constructively with, with member states. But now I think the key component is going to be implementation. Uh, okay. and, and, and I think uh, if implementation to be done right uh, in, in the coming period, in the coming uh, funding period up to 2027, we should see, you know, a, 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 a steady um, and fast growth of, 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 of circular economy 
uh, that I think uh, uh, automatically includes the social social uh, components. But uh, of course, we have to remain vigilant. We have to 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 keep on working with with member states and ensure that that those plans are actually implemented. As regards the funding, I think you know, as I said, it's it's unseen amount of of, of public spending. Yeah. Um, uh, to to um, to finish up, um, I I have just a, a more visionary question. Uh, Concerning uh, the 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 far uh, far away future, the the long term future of of the European economy, uh, uh, everything uh, as we talk now is pointing into the direction of of uh, using uh, less resources, uh, uh, using products longer, uh, which more or less means it's a, a slow or even not so slow, but hopefully faster shift from a from a, a take make waste uh, economy to a, a, we call it now circular economy, but it's it can also be called a value retaining economy or maintenance economy. Is there, are there any studies or any policy um, think tanks thinking about how the economy in itself, the structure of economy, the structure of competition must be, uh, 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 designed in the future to to uh, enable a maintenance economy instead of uh, a growing uh, a growth economy, which is basically growing mass flows. I, I think nobody would uh, would be uh, uh, would be uh, um, uh, disappointed if if uh, the the if there's financial growth and. And growth of wealth, but uh, we don't want to have a, a growth of mass flow, which is uh, uh, today connected with uh, with uh, financial growth. So, are there any concepts or studies uh, to the for this transition to a maintenance economy, or is this is this uh, yet uh, discussed in the policy making? No, I think uh, I think I think I think you you put it right, but I think it's it's very much in 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 the spirit of 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 um, our circular economy action plan. Uh, and overall, you know, the repair and, and, and maintenance sector restores products, uh, machinery, equipment, and, and other products to, to, to working order. And they also keep uh, products uh, safety and, and performances, creating those uh, new local opportunities that are distributed through uh, throughout the countries. And, Repair and maintenance activities promote uh, promote occupation opportunities for so-called low-skilled workers and high-skilled workers uh, as well, especially in the consumers uh, electronic sector. So reuse and 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 and, and repair uh, activities in the EU are found to be more labor-intensive than than average. Supporting yeah. uh, repair and maintenance activities is 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 a cost-effective. Uh, strategy due to their job creation potential and their lower uh, in, in intrinsic uh, resource consumption due to lower capital investment requirements. At the same time, it supports social cohesion due to their inherent uh, local dimension. And as I, as I already mentioned uh, before, the promotion of repair and use is, is central in, in our com, uh, commission's product policy, including the Sustainable Products Initiative. Repair and reuse activities are often undertaken uh, by, by, by actors of the social economy by making repair easier by design. We will not only benefit consumers, but we will also make uh, what, what, what you call the maintenance economy an important, uh, important com uh, com uh, component of, 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 of um, I would say, our broader circular uh, economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for for these uh, insights uh, and and this. Uh, and I can I can only say uh, we as uh, the network of uh, social economy reuse uh, and recycling enterprises of Europe uh, stand here to help you make this 
policy successful and uh, so I think we are we are we are a good team and and as you said in the beginning I I never uh, although we had the pandemic and all these uh, uh, critical times I had the impression that uh, the the uh, policy development in this field is is faster than ever uh, uh, in spite of the pandemic so uh, on on the national level in Austria I, I I realize it and I have the impression on the European level as well and I I think um, you have a, a key role in it and and thank you for that as well and uh, yeah uh, coming to the end Michael do you want to add something uh, to wrap up or to to something that I maybe forgot. Sorry, thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Sinkovicius, for 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 your uh, input and that of your staff as well, have, having been with us and, and helped us with this process also to to have the conversation with you. I, I know looking at uh, dossiers of other commissioners, such as the Social Economy Action Plan, is is one extra bit of work on top of your enormous portfolio, and making the synergies between the the two is is at least for us something of, of critical importance as we go uh, forward, especially with regards to how um, COVID has uh, impacted a lot of the uh, organisations uh, in our network, even though uh, bouncing back uh, bouncing back pretty strongly. Um, and on the policy side of things, we simply remain at your uh, disposal and also that of your team with regards to the Sustainable Product Policy Initiative, uh, eco design, um, waste shipment regulation, all of which we, we work in on a lot of detail. Um, normally here we're having, um, a, 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 I would say for us, somewhat of a, a strategic uh, conversation to bring together the two worlds. And one thing which I wanted to to, to raise before before um, ending as I uh, um, wanted to simply mention is that, is there a possibility in the future, or maybe a thought process which can be um, put into motion in that, the social economy action plan is an action plan which spans nine years it's a very long-lived uh, piece of work and will be evolving over time but it has a nine-year mandate from the commission to work on the circular economy action plan as far as i remember is to be concluded at least this iteration by 2025 um, maybe 2024 i've forgotten now the year but is there a possibility do you think in the future um, when looking to circular actions from the Commission between 25 and 29, is there an opportunity maybe to have one work area on social value in a circular economy, maybe looking more into depth at some of those um, impact assessments which you were mentioning that underlie policies, focusing a lot on what kind of activities can we really promote to generate employment, fast and good quality jobs? Do you think that's something in the future which could be integrating I would say concretely these two policy areas, or is this something still to to, yeah, it's it's not possible because it's it's very compartmentalized. Just fi final question, maybe it's a little bit. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. So I, I think all good. So I I, I think absolutely, uh, I, of course uh, it, you know. One thing, what 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 really you know, policies and 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 and, and politician uh, are going to 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 maybe think and try to shape what the other, which is going to be happening also on the ground. And I think uh, they're the reality, as I said, uh, it it does not really require uh, um, like mentioning, like I said in, in at the very beginning, that that. Uh, that these policies they already uh, integrated and 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 I think overlapping, overlapping uh, a lot because I think we 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 realize uh, very well uh, the scope of the challenge ahead of us, and and the circular economy on one hand it provides a a a a, a lot of solutions and it's very well accepted by by citizens by businesses, uh, by 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 the communities. But on the other hand, it also requires a skill, skills that we unfortunately at, at the moment don't have uh, and, 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 and it will uh, require us time to, to acquire them. Um, it will require certain programs and, and, and so on. So, you know, it's, it's certainly those challenges, they are already they, they overlapping and, and, and I don't think so that uh, uh, they, uh, they, they can be separated addressing, addressing, addressing the issues. 
Okay. Fantastic. So, Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we wish you uh, a lot of success in, in, in your work that you uh, uh, spoke about now. And, and I hope we can, we can uh, contribute to, to your success as well. And you, you are already contributing to our success. Thank you for that. And so, yeah, I, I wish you a, a very good further afternoon and, and a, a good year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and, 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 and thank you for, for, uh, for this conversation. Looking oh, forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.